Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone. Uh, my name is Marino Vignotti and I'm the Senior Sales Engineer at Cario and today I'm with my colleague uh, Martin Schimek. I'm Security Senior Developer in Cario Technologies. I will guide you through the hands-on session. Perfect, thank you. So, uh, today is the last of the three, uh, uh, three parts uh, Security Threats webinar and we will uh, uh, concentrating on the ransomware disruption. Um, there is a lot to go through. Uh, we will uh, we will take you through. Please uh, use the Q and A sessions for questions, uh, and uh, we'll uh, we'll take you through the agenda now. Uh, first of all, we start to have a look uh, where and how you get infected. We will move on to the real vulnerabilities, which are the plugins in the browser, specifically Adobe Flash. Uh, we we'll make a jump into the darknet specifically for exploit kits. Uh, Martin has done a lot of research on it. And then we will uh, talk about which is the real uh, windows of opportunity for, for being infected. And we will uh, uh, help you to see how you can reduce this window of opportunity for ransomware to attack you. Uh, and we have uh, on a series of uh, videos that will show you uh, uh, the parts around ransomware, including the identification and restoring, and we'll complete with two advice on on reducing the risks on uh, um, the ransomware um, affecting your business. So very quickly, uh, there there are a lot of economic reasons why uh, there is a big market shift. Um, more more data is available on the market, so prices are going down and people are moving away from attacking big companies and uh, moving on to a smaller company. This is not affecting us much, but unfortunately what is affecting us is the technical side. There, are, uh, um, there is a time of exposure longer now for, for people, and this is a, a problem. Second, uh, there are more and more exploit kits, uh, they, and they lower the entry level. Um, Non-technical people can actually uh, attack and uh, produce uh, ransomware, uh, even rent it uh, or subscribe as a software as a service. This is what we look at today. The next generation uh, we predict, and many analysts predict, is going to be more industry specific, more uh, specific application. For example, uh, it's easier to attack uh, an hospital because you know exactly what devices are there and you can target your ransomware or attacks around the, the device and the software running in that specific environment. Uh, but today we will, um, we will actually see why it's actually affecting so much businesses. And there is one single reason, very simple, is uh, no backups. If you had backups that you can go back to one second, two minutes, ten minutes, something like this, ransomware would not be a problem. Uh, or there are all backups, so the longer the, the gap is between what you've done today and what you, what you can restore is another weak point. Maybe you try to restore it and it doesn't work. Again, this is increasing your exposure. And if you have things like uh, links directly to the cloud or to your NAS, which back up everything automatically, then everything gets in encrypted. So the ransomware only affects businesses uh, when there is a big gap in the backups of the, or the working restoring. So this window, the narrower is this window, the less you are affected. So even if you get it and you can go back to one hour's work, actually it's not affecting you. You can just wipe the computer and start from scratch. So this is very, very, very important and we will see how at the end of the presentation can help you in uh, reducing this risk. So there are a lot of myths about uh, the crypto lock, uh, Tesla lock and so on. Why? Because people confuse the initiation method, such as I received an email and I got uh, a, run, a crypto locker. Now that was a link which actually took you to a place where all the full mechanism started. You received a, a PDF, there was another link. Again, the PDF itself uh, is getting more and more vulnerable, but is, is still pretty safe these days. Uh, you search on something, you click on this website, you don't know what you are going to. Again, that is another uh, initiation method. The real reason why people get ransomware these days 
is because they get transported somewhere else and those are the mechanisms. The real ones are because they download software, they actually use plugins which are infected and uh, they're using Adobe Flash like we're using it here now, we cannot do without and there are a lot of vulnerabilities. So let's have a look. Uh, if you want to be infected, what's the best way to do it? You just go and download some, uh, some software, pirated software, and you're just asking to be infected. If you don't download, if you don't download anything, uh, you're pretty, pretty safe. These people, they need to produce the call home, so they need to have just not a link to an e in an email, they need to have be more than that. They need to have some content, so they get some films, they package it together, they fragment it in a bit torrent and get in uh, the readable format. This format is what uh, people go and download stuff. The same for software. And this is all happening on the normal net. Is uh, put on a pirated website, extra torrent, kick torrent and uh, pirate bay. You go there, download something and you don't know what you're getting. This is uh, this is one of the reasons why people uh, get infected is the initial uh, is, is the kickstart of the process and from there they have packages they fully exploded inside inside the computer second one is plugins let's have a look why plugins are a problem and before we get there we need to understand very briefly about vulnerabilities last week we saw there are vulnerabilities uh, the exploit is released so there are there is a time when everyone is exposed until uh, antivirus, anti-malware, they release a, a protection or when the vendor released the patch. Uh, more important, there are differences in the vulnerabilities. There are some bad coding vulnerabilities which expose some data, but there is nothing serious about it. Uh, so you cannot actually be in uh, so too much a risk. And the serious ones and the exploited ones are the one that Martin will take you through and will show you why you are actually vulnerable because not all the, the list of the vulnerabilities but what are the serious ones. So a new way of distributing it, you cannot attack the browser directly, it's fully patched, there are more and more integration into the browser to prevent uh, leakage, leakage outside. So these uh, hackers, they need to do something they can uh, produce maybe uh, a plugin with the call home software, uh, links back to their network, but they, they need to actually push this plugin out, which is an equivalent of selling it. There is so much uh, free software out there that costs awful lot of time for them. The other one is actually to uh, take a um, look at what plugins are available there and which are providing vulnerabilities. If uh, some some of them they provide vulnerabilities uh, you might as well start to attack this type of uh, uh, plugin uh, using the vulnerabilities this is much more important for them because there is much a bigger base instead of uh, providing people with plugins so the main method infection regarding plugins there are two the number one is flash followed by silverlight so the highest risks are again about flash, not as a product because it's a little bit more complicated to attack but you can have vulnerabilities. So at this point inside this uh, package the, the hacker can repackage the flash with the, some, some code and force you to download it or use the plugin uh, when you're running something on the website, you, you use the play uh, function then activate some code internally that can call back uh, home and initiate the ransomware process. This is exactly the same for Silverlight uh, and now we will move on to the fake update site so maybe go to a website where uh, the plugin has been uh, put there you think everything is okay they tell you can you download the, the latest update uh, flash, this uh, latest flash actually whether it's form of a browser or pop-up 
will encourage you to press download by pressing download what you're going to do you're actually going to download their version of the flash with the call back to the system to initiate the ransomware so please do not press download regardless of which site you are just as we explained last week open the browser go to flash and download it yourself that's the only way to be 100 percent sure you are not getting infected vulnerabilities martin over to you okay so uh, we laid down the question how is it possible that browsers are safe and uh, plugins are vulnerable uh, let's take a statistic look on this topic um, the plugin is done by a completely different group of people than the browser so first the group is smaller and uh, there is no big interest of uh, big security groups so it's less uh, maintained so if we search for vulnerabilities in available databases of vulnerabilities we see that uh, over a few last years majority of security flaws are in uh, operating systems uh, one might ask uh, if operating system is more vulnerable than browsers or plugins uh, how is it possible everyone is not infected uh, the answer is easy uh, exploiting operating system flaw requires often to run something manually which can be easily scanned by antivirus so uh, these are hard to exploit but there are types of vulnerabilities attackers looking for those can be exploited just by opening an innocent picture video or just visiting site with mentioned flash so attackers gather these vulnerabilities they put hands on every one they can do a specially crafted image that triggers the exploitation uh, the video the flash the source code in JavaScript HTML whatever and they pack them in so-called exploit kits uh, which is a kit that uh, brings all those vulnerable strings that can be used inside image and trigger the vulnerability uh, not to speaking too general the main uh, vulnerability attackers looking for is the remote code execution which allows them to run another process that can do whatever it wants so uh, these groups uh, provide just a framework that search for vulnerability and executes the code so you can deploy this kit to your site and every visitor is scanned whether he or she has vulnerabilities and everything is done automatically so it tries let's say tens or hundreds of vulnerabilities in few seconds until it succeeds uh, we can step down to the underground of the internet uh, which is called darknet it's accessible only over Tor uh, you can visit marketplace like this one and search for uh, ex exploit kits like mentioned crime pack uh, it's easy to buy it's a shop you are familiar with it's very cheap uh, but it requires a lot of effort to start using it uh, and of course as any other legitimate software these frameworks are maintained by professionals they have updates they have support forums and so on so it's like normal software but with malicious intentions so as I set up the term exploit kit uh, let's have a deeper look inside uh, this image looks very complicated but trust me it's still 
very simplified. The goal of this image is not to deeply understand the mechanism. It's, uh, it should just uh, bring the idea of how malware and exploit kit can hide be before hide against uh, on the way firewalls and your local antivirus. Uh, it's divided in two parts. The one is running in browser. That's the exploit kit that's looking for the security vulnerabilities. And the red one is desired process. Here is used ransomware as an example. But it can be even a hello world message just for fun. So that's why we speak about exploit case, kit as an independent piece of software and the malware as another piece of software. Uh, this particular example is taken from Neutrino Kit, which is uh, now trending exploit kit. It tries to outnumber the Angular exploit kit. So, to get the idea, I try to simply explain what's going on. Uh, you visit some page that contain a flash, no matter if it's intentionally included or whether it's part of advertisement. This flash has some special abilities which are um, which are generally har harmless. So the flash starts to loading. Uh, the main SWF file needs to be transferred from the internet. Uh, on the way firewall scans it and find no harmful content, no um, virus uh, signature is available for that flash, so it's passed through. Then you reach, then it reaches your computer with antivirus, which also has no suspicious, uh, which has no signatures for it, so it marks OK, because uh, generally the flash does nothing harmful. Uh, but part of this site know the vulnerabilities, so they instruct the flash to download some other data. Those data are transferred encrypted without any known format, so they are treated as an ordinary encrypted message, so it cannot be scanned, so antivirus pass it through. Uh, then there is a flaw in the flash that allows you to craft any data into a new flash that can be executed within the first flash. So then you have flash in flash. So the incoming data are decrypted and run as another flash process. But this time everything happened in memory and thus it's not scanned by antivirus because every antivirus scanning is happening during the load time from disk to memory. But in the memory unknown data came then they have been decrypted and run as another flash. So uh, having flash in flash is not a big deal but the second flash exploits one of those mentioned vulnerabilities that allows it to start another process outside the browser. The process can further exploit some uh, operating system flaws to uh, obtain higher privileges to do whatever it wants. So it can access the entire disk and the ransomware slowly becoming not fastly becoming reality. So you end up with an encrypted disk with, let's say, Tesla Crypt, which we will see further in the hands-on part of our presentation. So what I have described in uh, those three animated slides, um, I mentioned that some vulnerabilities are very critical, allows you to remotely execute code. 
uh, they can be bundled together in automated piece of software called exploit kit and they are distributed over advertising network where you can use a flash and uh, this type is called malvertising. Uh, we have several other types. Uh, you can even host the exploit kit with the malware on your own site. So you have to attract people to, uh, for example, having pirated movies, uh, free, free music, and so on. Or on the other side, if you're not very technically skilled, you can just rent the exploit kit with the ransomware as a service and then you pay per victim so every infected and paying people's money are divided between you and the operator of the service. So uh, back to the underground uh, as I mentioned the malware is usually bundled with the exploit kit so you don't have to search which exploit kit is the best you just select the kind of malware here we have example of ransomwares and uh, some spyware that is capable of logging uh, credentials of PayPal and uh, one interesting is the ransomware as a service you just uh, order what kind of uh, ransomware you want you receive small snippet of code that you embed in your page you don't have to be an expert in anything and you just receiving money from paying infected people so for example could be me uh, that I don't know much about programming so I will go and buy something and then I will uh, uh, receive royalties from uh, the code that uh, you are running for me, correct? Yeah, correct. Uh, the hardest part for you would be to set up some Bitcoin account and then changing money from Bitcoins to real money and back and forth. So it's very easy for uh, below moderately skilled people. Perfect. So what's this easy clicking? Uh, easy clicking is um, a moment of destruction. Uh, let's have an example. You visit some page while you have a flash plugin disabled. Uh, the page requires you to use the flash because whatever reason. So you might decide whether allow the flash content to be loaded and executed or not. Uh, the browser asks you for give for each domain separately so you have to be careful for which domain you allow the flash execution in this case it's for BBC which we consider is safe so trusting this page uh, might bring no harm but uh, if the URL is weird we don't recommend to allow the flash and uh, you have a possibility to override previous settings you can uh, allow later if you find out that the page entirely is safe so you can override in browser on the other hand if you allow flash on some strange site for example if you search for free pirated music and the site requires you to run a flash you might uh, easily click yes and then you will end up with this which is message that your files are encrypted and you have a big trouble for example with Tesla crypt which we will see soon and perfect so no it's fun. a moment of, uh, moment of distraction. You get there, you don't know what you're doing, you allow an easy action to make uh, a mess in uh, your computer. So, uh, this is a, a, a video that uh, is actually real. Uh, Martin's dad was uh, actually affected by a ransomware and Martin did a personal research on this. So, what you see here, 
his uh, computer being uh, you, uh, attacked and encrypted and is actually uh, Martin's father uh, who asked him to go through the process and this happened in April and it's very important to know uh, the difference between April and now because you will see things inside the various video what, why there is a, such a difference in timelines. Over to you Martin. Okay, so uh, the video begins like the scene from IT Crowd uh, because you have messages everywhere, uh, instructions how to send money, uh, how to get a wallet. It's presented as an HTML file. For case there is no browser, it's presented as an image. And for the case there is no image viewer, it's also on the background of your desktop. So you see files without an icon, that's because they are encrypted with a new suffix which is not associated. So first things to do is to scan the computer with some anti-spyware, anti-malware, antivirus, whatever security tool. Because the general behavior of ransom is that it will disappear without a trace except encrypted files, but you can never be sure when we speak about cybercrime. So even though this program doesn't directly relate to ransomware, we recommend to clean up the PC because there might be remainders of uh, ransomware that would uh, spoil our effort to decrypt files without paying the ransom. Thank you. Also, you could actually be affected by other stuff that is not being detected by as ransom, but is still there as, as you've been on a website. So uh, let's have a look what you do next uh, after you've been scanning. Um, so um, uh, people are afraid, say, uh, I, I'm going to pay because I needed the data. I, you, know, you panic immediately. No, it's possible that you can decrypt without pain. And we want to show you why. So if this is uh, your uh, PC laptop uh, that has been affected, they generally target uh, very, very well-known uh, files like documents, uh, Excel, uh, PDF, videos, because these are the important data, that's the, the important data for you. So there is a, a specific website called ID Ransomware that uh, Martin after will show you how uh, to make use of it, uh, which uh, can help you to uh, provide them with the sample. When you have this sample of the encrypted data, they, they could be uh, millions, if not billions of probabilities of trying the right key. And that will take very, very long time. However, because it's a, it's a video, they know what the format should be like. And this will allow the website to immediately delete all the possibilities that don't apply to that format and they were restricted to a very low number of keys and they would be able within two, three, four, ten minutes, even an hour to decrypt uh, a file that uh, could be one of the billions of possibilities to be encrypted and they would be able to provide you with decryption key. So you do not have to pay. Uh, maybe it's a just question of time and with uh, some other tricks we'll give you now uh, you can actually go back to a situation where you can recover the data, don't pay any criminals, and uh, move on. So in the next uh, slide, we will uh, now uh, Martin will show you how to identify the actual uh, ransomware that uh, is affecting you. So this is the same machine that was infected. Okay, so uh, before the video starts, I would like to say that. Uh, this computer was taken from my father to my private uh, network. I didn't want it to connect, so I used external media for some purposes. So let's begin. Uh, as had been said, we need to take a ransom message and the sample file. So as we know, it starts after the system starts. So we go to the startup menu. Uh, then we follow the link in the startup menu and we see it's in some folder so we take both of those messages uh, for here I used the DVD because 
it's not known that uh, viruses infect DVDs, so uh, it's safe to burn it and take it to my computer. Uh, I already have one sample file on the on the DVD, so let's burn the DVD. Go to my own computer. Uh, I search for the ransomware identification service from Malware Hunter team. Uh, I provide them with the ransom note, which is on that DVD. It doesn't matter which one because they are capable of uh, understanding both of them. Then I show them the file encrypted, and now I see that there is a big chance for me to decrypt those files for free. Uh, as Marina mentioned, uh, that happened in April, so when I tried at home, it showed just one result with the crypt XXX, but I did the video uh, one week ago, and uh, three more versions of crypt XXX exist. So I go to the crypt XXX uh, decryptor page and just download the exe file they provide that is provided by Kaspersky Lab. Uh, they provide a lot of other tools for different kind of uh, ransomwares, so uh, you have to start in the identification page to select the proper one. And that's it. So there is a proof, there is a proof that uh, you don't have to pay, and it's only a question of time and actually uh, going into why? So this is not just about, this is something that goes back in history, correct, Martin? So you might ask, uh, how is it possible to decrypt encrypted file, despite the ransom says it's impossible to decrypt those files because they use very strong cipher suite and so on. Uh, first, we must state they use uh, symmetric encoding, which in some cases is vulnerable of so-called uh, known plain text attack, which was first introduced by Mr. Alan Turing, who, who is not only famed for a Turing machine and a Turing test, but uh, one of his greatest success was introduction of uh, known plain text attack during the Second World War, when he was uh, working on uh, breaking the Enigma code, and what they used was exactly the known plain text attack. So uh, if you're interested in the uh, whole mechanism of that attack, uh, I recommend the imitation game, which is dedicated to Mr. Turing and to his work in Bletchley, where they broke the Enigma code thanks to the known plain text attack because they had encrypted and decrypted messages, so they set up the machine that did. And the same we have for ransomware. Thank you. So basically, the, you can decrypt using the opposite. Somebody has encrypted the, your data, they don't, give you the, the, they don't give you the key, and you can use the same methods uh, by uh, decrypting it. Uh, and not using the brute force attack, which people think is the best way to do it. So we will now show you how you can decrypt the data once it has been uh, identified, and uh, uh, the identification happens using the ID ransomware website, and uh, the decryption will happen using uh, other tools that Martin are, are going to, is going to show you now. So uh, before the video, I would like to add that uh, sometimes you have to provide uh, encrypted and decrypted file, but in many cases it's sufficient that we know the internal format of encrypted file. For example, JPEG has some static header, so you have a few bytes known in advance, so during the decryption you can omit a lot of uh, keys that don't lead to decryption. So I transferred the decryption program back to my father's computer. Uh, it's exe file with a graphical interface, so you just uh, click on it, it will start. 
this is a multi-purpose tool. It can deal with uh, multiple ransomwares. So you have to provide uh, encrypted file sample again. So it knows which strategy to select to perform decryption. So I select one random file. Uh, it warns me that it will take a long of time, but uh, we don't care. We want our files back, so we can wait. Uh, here I speeded up time in the video, uh, so you can see that in uh, less than two minutes uh, the code is broken and uh, we have uh, one file decrypted, then some others coming straight away. So if we skip a little further in time, uh, I will show you that uh, the decryption is as fast as uh, copying files over the disk and that's uh, because they use uh, symmetric encryption which has uh, support in hardware of processor of our PC so the decryption doesn't slow down the file rescue. Fantastic. So you can identify the version. There are tools available and uh, this leads us to the next step of uh, telling you a few other things specifically if it's not possible um, what you do you you put this data to the service if the service say look I can find it it's too new you save it on your backup and then you go back in uh, la later on the service will be able to uh, identify the system that uh, has been used for encrypting data and you will be able to decrypt it. So it's only a question of time and that combined with the, uh, the approach on backups will actually shrink your probabilities to be affected by ransomware. So unfortunately um, Martin's dad, uh, it wasn't bad li like enough to get one, we got double encryption. So we get bonus uh, from showing you that sometimes it's not even worth paying because there are risks. Let's have a look what happened to your dad, Martin. So here, uh, as an example, I selected one folder, let it decrypt uh, just for a couple of seconds so all the pictures are rescued. But I noticed something strange. There is encrypted HTML and bitmap. Here is a proof that the photos are recovered uh, correctly. And uh, my attraction got back to those HTML files because we have no HTML in any photo folder. So I opened one because, yes, it's uh, the ransom's message. And then I scroll up and find out that it has uh, encrypted counterpart, so I opened both and wanted to compare them. Now I'm not sure whether it's the first or the second, but it, as you can see, they are absolutely the same, just uh, minor text corrections, which means the first ransomware did uh, encrypted the photos and leave the message that photos had been encrypted. And later, the second ransomware did encrypted those messages because it thought these are valuable documents and left another ransom message. Uh, I also have a one folder where they meet in a real time because uh, part of the pictures was uh, encrypted with one of them and the second part with the second of them. So, um, what to say, uh, you might end up in a bad situation that uh, you pay the ransom for uh, one and you only receive part of files, maybe none of them, or you pay the ransom and you receive the poorly coded decryptor that decrypts all the files with the wrong key and in that case you lose your files forever. So is, is not a risk worth 
to embarking on, thinking that uh, you are going to be uh, uh, getting your data and you could end up with uh, other uh, ransomware there and you actually not just waste time, you waste money and you could that your information can be passed to other people because it's all about extracting money. So that is the risk you are incurring in actually uh, moving on or towards the criminal area. So what's this uh, chain of uh, effects? Uh, so let me explain what uh, we learned in last few slides. Uh, let me go backwards. We ended up with the ransomware, which is the final stage of attacking your computer. So you select one, uh, then you select the distribution channel, uh, in this case malvertising. So uh, you know that uh, over some advert you received uh, crypt XXX and it was bundled with Angular exploit kits which acts as a starter of the entire process and the angler is stuffed with uh, with exploits of several serious vulnerabilities uh, this diagram shows that uh, we have a very modular market of uh, malicious software and that is why we experienced 500 percent boost of ransomware in 2016 in compared to 2015 and we are just in a half of the year that's why it's going so much so but there are ways as you see you're watching now on uh, uh, using Adobe Connect you cannot do without so there is a, uh, always a way to protect yourself and uh, we're talking about sandboxing uh, sandboxes is general terms and now Martin will tell us uh, how, how you can uh, protect even uh, using the browser with Adobe Connect so as we know we have some possibilities of cures uh, it's always better to be safe than sorry and thus we need some uh, forward security because uh, as you saw some attacks are invisible for antiviruses uh, that's why I prepared a little experiment uh, we took a small web server install it on a virtual machine uh, I downloaded the ransomware Tesla crypt from public uh, malware database uh, I just uh, put it in the web server uh, as you can see it's uh, password protected uh, that's because you might uh, easily uh, execute it on your computer so that's why it's password protected and it's also distributed without uh, uh, extension so you have more you have to do more to execute a ransomware so we rename it to easily type it in the browser so let me type the name ransomware exe and it's downloaded so okay I can run it I'm informed it's from internet no matter I want to run it okay let's do it and then in less than a second my computer is ruined with the ransomware so the message we saw previously in some slide uh, let's take a look what happened on my desktop I have the ransom message and I had few images so you see those JPEGs has a strange suffix and there's even the textual ransom node now rewind the time and try it again with the browser run inside the sandbox. Sandbox is something like a change root on Linux. Maybe uh, we can compare it to Wine. Uh, it provides the program with the artificial sense of uh, being run in a real system, but those files being used are isolated on dedicated part of the disk. So uh, here we download the ransomware again. Yes, save it. Uh, and now we are notified by the sandbox that new file appeared in the artificial 
system environment. So we discard that because we don't want to propagate it in our working system. Now we run it uh, and the sandbox runs itself again with the exe and it immediately presents us of a new file in the artificial environment and after a few seconds we are present with presented with plenty more new files appearing inside the virtual environment. So we dismiss it, we don't want to propagate it into our system uh, and we look in the sandbox overview. Uh, there are processes being run inside the sandbox. We switch to the file system view, uh, select a random folder, doesn't matter which one and we see that it contains the ransom message so every folder has it and let's take a look on our desktop where we have those pictures and you see the same happens strange suffix, files are encoded, ransom message but if we look at our real desktop we see that all pictures and documents are untouched and fully working so everything is captured inside the sandbox, it can be deleted, it doesn't affect our system at all. Thank you very much Martin, so there is the advice available for you guys to and your customer to actually move on to a much safer way of uh, uh, browsing the internet with plugins, it's a sandbox, safe mode, whichever is the terminology used by the browser. So. We want to now get into the, some uh, final suggestions. We have just a, a couple of more slides to go to. Uh, and the, first of all, we know that the zero day attack exists. There is nothing you can do about it uh, because the, uh, that is there. But you can shrink it. You can definitely shrink it. And you can either remove the Adobe Flash, restrict it to specific sites, if you can't, as you see, you can actually use the sandboxing technology uh, to actually reduce it. We know that also it is not possible for everyone to do that because normal businesses they are not like me, Martin, or the other colleagues who actually spend the time in doing this. But you can manage it. You can manage it because the window of opportunity can be shrunk again, can be shrunk by using a secondary backup, you can have your normal backup, which is automated, your secondary backup needs to be done manually or from a remote initiation, which means even if you are having a backup that is linked to Dropbox or something else, the, the, the malware cannot propagate. By doing this, you're actually uh, going back to just a few days and even if you get hacked or something, you are able to go back and shrink that window. The next step is actually to increase the protection if you are not able to uh, recover everything or to move in an area by uh, installing endpoint security with AV. There is nothing in, uh, that better than that because we'll come into place when the signature is ready and the IPS will provide you with uh, gateway level security in terms of sig uh, in terms of signature and IP addresses that they are on the blacklist gets improved every day because it gets spread and uh, even if you don't install the update coming from the patch uh, you, uh, you actually still be protected the gateway level and this is uh, uh, by just doing this two small steps of uh, uh, secondary backup trigger manually and uh, gateway protection with endpoint always uh, on will actually uh, increase your uh, chances to uh, almost put to zero this uh, zero day attack. So we would like to thank you 